Welcome to today's Fluid Flow 3 tutorial on modeling pumps and piping systems. Today we will develop a simple piping network transporting water along a 6 km pipeline using a single pump. In doing so, we will determine the pump duty requirement for the system and using this information select a suitable Grundfos pump for our application. Finally, we will define the Grundfos pump in the Fluid Flow component database and model this new pump unit in our system. This will allow us to identify the operating point on the pump curves and pinpoint how close we are to operating at the best efficiency point. Firstly, we will develop our simple model on the flow sheet using two known pressure nodes connected together with a single steel pipe. We will also add the fluid flow auto booster component which allows us to define the design flow requirement for the system. As you can see, Fluid Flow provides default information for each node which is easily edited on the data palette. In this case, we wish to define an inlet design condition of 1.3 atmospheres, 15 degrees C water, with an outlet design condition of 1 atmosphere, 15 degrees C water. And you can choose from any of the pressure and temperature units as seen here. Our design flow requirement is 36 meters cubed per hour. The default pipe data is 2 inch schedule 40 with a length of 10 meters and you will notice in this model that the pipe lengths are 5 meters each as fluid flow has automatically split the original 10 meter pipe into two equal pipe segments. We however require both pipes to be 4 inch schedule 40 so we can multi-select the components by holding the shift key and selecting both pipes. We can then select our desired pipe diameter and classification from the pipe database and finally change the pipe lengths. Our inlet pipe is 1.25 meters in length and our discharge pipe is 6 kilometers in length. Our model is now complete. We can also communicate our design data by displaying it on the flow sheet. To do this, we simply select the relevant nodes and on the input tab of the data palette, we change the properties on the flow sheet from hide to show. We can now select any of the input or results data we wish to display. In this case, we will display the input pressure, fluid and temperature. We can also change the text format and just to demonstrate this we will just increase the text size and also change the style to bold. OK. If we calculate the network, we can view the results on the data palette. Here we can see the calculated flow rate, friction loss, pressure, temperature, velocity, etc. And if we click on the auto booster component, we can see that fluid flow has now determined a duty pressurize of 84.6 meters of fluid an available NPSH of 13.3 meters of fluid and the fluid of course being water at 15 degrees C. We can now use this information to select a suitable Grundfos pump for our system. At 36 meters cubed per hour with a head requirement of 84.6 meters of fluid we will select a Grundfos CR45-4 pump and add this unit to the fluid flow database. We will define each curve as seen here using flow increments of 5 meters cubed per hour across the horizontal flow axis and we will define the corresponding head efficiency and NPSH increment as dictated by the respective curve coordinates. 
To add this pump to the database, select Database, followed by Boosters, and Centrifugal Pump. Now we click Add, and we give our pump its own unique name. Click OK. Now we define the manufacturer. Our pump materials, in this case cast iron and stainless steel. We define the pump applications. In this case we are going to select building services. We define the pump usage. We are going to select clean water and define the maximum operating pressure, in this case 16 bar. The suction sizes are both 80 millimeters. The pump speed, we are going to proceed on the basis of a pump with a data operating speed of 2,900 RPM and a minimum and maximum speed range of 2,600 and 3,200 RPM and we will also proceed with a single impeller diameter of 200 millimeters. Now we can enter our pump curve data. To begin we define our flow and head units. In this case meters cube per hour and meters of fluid and as mentioned earlier the pump capacity curve was developed using flow increments of 5 meters cube per hour across the horizontal flow axis. and we can enter the corresponding head coordinates in this column. To complete the definition of the curve, we must reset the curve minimum and maximum limits. And that is the positioning of the vertical red lines as seen here. Now we have a well-defined pump capacity curve. Click OK to complete the addition of this curve. The efficiency and NPSH curves are defined in exactly the same way and for speed I have already defined these curves in the database. I can, however, click on each curve to provide an overview of the data entered for each. The data entry is now complete, so if we click OK, the new pump has been successfully added to the fluid flow database. To model this Grundfos pump in our network, we simply right click on the auto booster component, select change component and choose centrifugal pump. And we must check the box to keep all common property values common. You will now see the auto booster component has changed to the centrifugal pump node. We select the input tab on the data palette, followed by the pump model, and we select our specific pump. Select OK, and now our new pump has been defined in the model. We must now recalculate the network in order to update our calculations based on this new pump. Now click on the results tab to view the pump operating performance. As you can see, 
Fluidflow has established that based on the data operating speed, this pump can now provide a flow rate of 36.8 meters cubed per hour with a power requirement of 11.19 kilowatts and an efficiency of 78.75%. If we click on the chart tab, we can see where the system curve intersects the pump capacity curve. And we can also pinpoint the operating point on the pump efficiency curve. And as you can see, the pump is operating close to the best efficiency point on the curve. As we have defined a speed range for this pump, we can edit the operating speed and recalculate the network to ensure we are operating as close to the best efficiency point as possible. So if we change the operating speed from 2,900 RPM to 2,850 RPM, select OK, recalculate the network and view the results, we can see that fluid flow has now calculated a flow rate of 36.1 meters cubed per hour with a reduced power requirement of 10.62 kilowatts and a duty efficiency of 78.75%. If we click on the Messages tab, we can see that Fluidflow has enunciated a message advising that the pump affinity law has been changed. Changes in impeller diameter are modelled in the exact same way and the effect on the performance is also viewed in the Results and Charts tab. It is recommended that the user contacts a pump manufacturer directly to select a suitable pump which will operate as near to the best efficiency point as possible. The selected pump can be modelled in the system. It is recommended that the user contacts It is recommended that the user contacts a pump manufacturer directly to select a unit which will operate as near to the best efficiency point as possible. The selected pump can be modelled in the system and as demonstrated in this tutorial It is recommended that the user con It is recommended that the user contacts a pump manufacturer directly to select a unit which will operate as near to the best efficiency point as possible. The selected pump can be modeled in the system as demonstrated in this tutorial. Correct pump selection will ensure the risk of premature pump failure along with fluid pumping cost is minimized. And that concludes our short tutorial on modeling a manufacturer's pump in a piping system. For further information, visit our website at www.fluidflowinfo.com.